All right, so we're talking about the disposable cylinders for refrigerants. And I have one here that is R134A. And we're talking about some of the things that should be done in regards to the EPA certification once the recovery, once the cylinders are empty. Now, even though they're empty, there's no liquid refrigerant in them, they still have a little bit of vapor that's got to be recovered and put in a tank that matches the refrigerant that you're taking out of the disposable cylinder. Now these are never to be reused. That's one of the questions usually on the test. Uh, they only used one time only, never to be reused again. And then once they're done, after I recover this refrigerant, I'm gonna render it useless. And the way I wanna do that is when I get it down to zero PSI, I'll snap the handle off the top, and then you'll see me smack a hole in the side and drill a hole so that nobody could ever use this again. And then we will recycle the metal. So those are the things I will do to uh, after, after recovering the refrigerant. I could also pop the safety plug right there. That safety plug on most of them is set to blow somewhere between 350 and 500 PSI. I've actually seen one of these blow before. And when it does blow, it encompasses the whole area with the liquid refrigerant. Liquid, vapor, all refrigerant flies out. And because it's heavier than air and displaces oxygen, it goes to the ground first and fills up from the ground up, which means you should vacate and ventilate. Just get out. And when you leave, leave the door open on the way out. ASHRAE standard 15 says that any room that has a large amount of refrigerant or equipment with a large amount of refrigerant needs to be protected with a refrigerant room monitor that will signal an audible alarm and also turn on a ventilator to vent out the refrigerant. If you do not have a self-contained breathing apparatus, a SCBA, that's a little different than a scuba, then you need to vacate and ventilate. You never try and stop the leak. You just leave it and let it ventilate on the way out the door. We actually do have a refrigerant alarm monitor on the wall over there uh, from Johnstone Controls that monitors for this 134A refrigerant. So we are in compliance there. So because it's virgin refrigerant, brand new, I don't need the use of a filter dryer. I don't need to recycle it. All I need to do is recover it. So we're gonna hook up the drum to this one here. It's inside of the recovery machine. And Brandon, if you want to plug it in while I'm doing this to the power outlet. And we're going to recover because there's only vapor in there. Now, I've turned it upside down so I know that there's no liquid in it. And believe it or not, the stuff that's in here is the exact same tetrafluoroethane. It's the same thing that they use for uh, cleaning dusters here. So when it's like this can here, it still has some pressure, but no liquid. So the same thing's true for here. If I wanted to get liquid out of this tank, vapor's up, right side up. I could turn the tank upside down and liquid refrigerant comes out. That's actually the same refrigerant. Now, I won't vent it like this because it's illegal to vent HFCs from the big canisters, but they're actually using the one pound canisters for cleaning dusters. It's the same stuff, the same refrigerant uh, that they're using for that there. And you can vent that stuff all day long. So we use that as, for educational uh, to show the kids what the liquid refrigerant looks like. Now, because I don't want to fill above 80%, of the 50 pound tank here. I don't want it to go up to above 40. I gotta find out how much refrigerant's already in it. So we put the tank up here like this. And the tank weight itself should be a TW number on the side. And that is, the tank weight is 28 pounds. So I have about five pounds of refrigerant in here, just a little bit over, five pounds of refrigerant. 33 minus 28 is five pounds of refrigerant. So I can hold 40. So we can still hold 35 pounds of refrigerant, which I know there's not 35 pounds of refrigerant in there. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then hook it up here, and I still won't open the tank until I purge it. Now a couple other things about these tanks, if you can take a look, this one's good. They identify the reusable cylinders because they're yellow on the top and gray on the bottom, and they're regulated by the DOT, Department of Transportation. So this one here, showing signs of rust, the paint, you can't repaint it. Technically this one should be taken out of commission because it's not damaged, there are a few scratch marks, but it's showing signs of rust. So we're going to use this to recover, but it's not going to be in use for much longer. We're going to take this out. Also, there should be a date stamp on the side that should be tested, hydrostatically tested, every five years. So we'll take a look and see and make sure that that's done too uh, before we really use this uh, cylinder and put it in, in use. So we're all set. I'm going to go ahead and turn it to vapor, turn it to recover, open the tank. Whatever pressure's in the tank is gonna push through the system and I can kinda purge here. Now, if it's not giving me enough pressure to purge here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the machine, let it purge for two seconds to get the air out, and then I can go ahead and open the tank and let the rest of it go 
in. And once this tank gets sucked down to 10 inches of mercury, it'll show recovery complete. I can switch it to purge, and then we'll, we'll render that cylinder useless. So we're almost there. This doesn't take very long. It would actually go up in pressure, but it's she still got a little bit left. So if it stays below 2 PSI, the recovery machine won't kick on. So I just manipulated it a little bit to kick it off. So that's it. It's done. The recovery is complete. So we're going to switch it to off, switch it to purge. We're going to push the remaining vapor into the tank so it lowers it down to 0 PSI so we have de minimis release, and then we'll destroy it once it gets settled down. It goes down to zero and the light comes on, we can pull the hose off the cylinder and render it useless. All right, that's it. So we can go ahead and when I take this off, we shouldn't hear any more air, or I'm sorry, refrigerant leak out and we're good. So now I can go ahead and snap the valve off just by using a pair of channel locks and you can snap the valve off here to handle by twisting it open and just keep twisting it open and then the valve will eventually crack off. Sometimes we can bend it and it'll snap itself. There, she's coming off now. And snap that off like that and then I'm gonna go ahead and try and pop the plug but the plug's designed to blow out, not in. So it doesn't. There we go. We still had a little bit of refrigerant left. Even though we've opened up the valve all the way. So this valve must have gone bad at some point and it's been sitting around for too long. So we'll go ahead and we'll do the same thing to this one here. And uh, uh, a couple other things. When the refrigerant cylinders are shipped, these disposable cylinders are supposed to be shipped upright. That also could be one of the questions they ask you as well. 